What's up, guys? Pittsburgh White Schwartz. We're finishing out Don Machi, joined today by Andy and Paru. Zach, unfortunately, could not make it. Maybe he will join us later if we are still going when he gets back from his thing. But we must continue forward because we are all very busy over the next couple of weeks. So we are getting it done now. Andy, it's yeah. your favorite profile. Your favorite kind of card. This one's actually pretty cool, though. Uh, yeah, so it's Hestia Brainstormer. It searches. And uh, whenever you play an event card once per turn, you get to draw a card and discard a card. Um, so since the last video, I've, I've actually purchased and have been uh, messing around with, playing around with Don Manchi, uh, doing some testing. And um, my initial hunch of you wanting to play a lot of event cards in the set is definitely correct. Um, if you're playing the Bell Combo, specifically at level 1, which you probably are, um, you already have eight events in your deck. And the nice thing about this Hestia Brainstorm is the uh, draw discard effect can happen on both players' turn. And since the uh, blue event card, your climax combo salvages or searches, is a uh, counter event, you can do this effect on your opponent's turn too. To maybe like discard a climax card if you need to, or just to like try to hand filter yourself uh, going into your next turn. Yeah, sounds solid. Yeah, this is um I've played with this profile before as well on Card Capture Sakura Japanese. Uh has this exact same card except it's a salvage brainstorm. Um but you didn't have like the torch event, you only had the uh you had the just draw, so your draw card becomes uh draw two ditch one, which is pretty good. Uh really makes that other bell knife uh what what the hell is that card? Wakashimaru or whatever. Ushiwakamaru. Uh, Ushiwakamaru, the one that's just Upstart Goblin. It makes those a lot better. Um, but I never played it with, like, a torch. That's probably really nice, actually. Um, it's it's just like you think it would be with uh, the Ushiwakamaru just draw one event. Yeah. It's exactly what you think it'd be. You do your torch effect, you get a look at however many cards you want, add whatever you want to hand, and then do your draw discard. Um, and it can get really nutty, too, when you have multiple of these Hestia brainstorms on the field. Oh, yeah. Because uh, you can just you can dig really, really deep to try to, like, find a climax or find whatever you need. Yeah, you can, like, get, uh, like, can, a three-card draw. It can, it can be pretty nuts, yeah. Yeah, I like it in the context of the set. I think the card's really good. Yeah, I mean, I'd give it, like, the minus. I, I wish it was a salvage brainstorm, actually. I usually like the search ones, but... You have so much stuff that's, like, milling through your deck, like, with the torches and the draw discard effect. I'd give it the I, A+, plus if it was a salvage. The salvages, salvages, like, just open up recurrence of non-interactive climax combos, which is, like, one of the main reasons searches aren't as desirable. Like, yeah. being able to recur your combos is just, like, something that a salvage brainstorm can do that a search brainstorm can never do. All right. Yeah, I think that's I think that's good. We move on. Why is this double rare? Uh what's this girl's name? I don't know. She she works at the bank or whatever. Um all your level 3 or higher characters in front of this game 2k. Aina? Yeah, that's her okay. name. And you can act rest this if there's an event in your waiting room. She's one of your opponent's characters and that character gains a following ability for the turn during battles involving this you cannot play events or backups. Oh, okay. So it gives any character, or any lane, as long as your opponent's characters aren't hexproof, uh, anti-backup and anti-event. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's so like the... the... Oh, what Sorry. were you going to say? No, go for it. Okay, I was going to say that um, the, the spot where Don Machi really seems to shine is with its early plays. Um, you have three really, really good early plays. Um, and being able to give them 2,000 power and be able to turn off your opponent's, like, anti-change counters or events is really nice, too. Especially considering the one early play is, uh, already has Hexproof if you're playing the yellow one. So you can shroud up your other lane then, too. Okay. It still doesn't, it doesn't read like a double rare to me. The, the, what, what, Bang Dream has this, like, exact same card, right? What rarity was that one? Like, I rare? don't know. That was a they, yeah. No, it's a there's rare like a Saya. level assist, the uh, bride for a day. Yeah, the bride's well, 
Level and six. also, the Bang Dream one, didn't it target your own character? So it got around text proof? Maybe. I don't, know. I don't know if there was a cost associated to it. I think it was literally just tap this if there's an event in your waiting room, choose one of your characters, and it gets this ability. Regardless, like I kind of agree with Carmen. This doesn't really seem like it doesn't read like a double rare. It's like a it's a pretty good card, but I do think yeah, it's, it's good. It's Does a decent card, like, yeah. A non reverse combo? I don't remember. Mm, mm, for level three, you mean? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's good with the uh, with the wealth. The wealth, yeah. yeah the that's one what wealth I was gonna say the red one, yeah. Oh yeah, this is actually really good with wealth. Makes him a twelve five. Opponent can't back up on him. The yeah, boy. it probably finds its way in at like a one or two of. It just doesn't feel like a double rare to me when I read it. Yeah, it's like a level two assist. It's like mm -hmm. usually those are like rare at the most. But I don't know. This set's like weird when it comes to like levels, right? There's the two one restander. I do think this like card's that. really good though. Even oh yeah, it's kind of an awkward carry. thing. This doesn't work with the two one restander if you're trying to run that. Oh yeah, it doesn't. No. That's so stupid. Because I was, I was brewing around with that trying to make that work. And it was like kind of annoying because I wanted this back row. So yeah. they couldn't like back up on my restander, but then this doesn't pump it. Yeah, so it's just small. Well, he's 12 still, right? All right. Not like super small. Moving on. Part. All right, level three, uh, breast milk. For each of your other characters. Jesus Christ. The trait, she gets a thousand. In back row, she gets a thousand power. Uh, she is a stock healer. Discard a card. And when she attacks, if you have the pants. You choose one of your characters, and it gets one soul, and cancel burn two. But she just cannot decide if this ability is, is supposed to cost one stock or not. Yeah. What do you mean? Because there, this combo exists. Sometimes you have to pay a stock, and sometimes you don't. Yeah, like this time it's free. One, you have to pay a stock. The Kanade from Angel Beats, you don't have to pay a stock. The Sharo from Gochiusa, you have to pay the stock. Don't those ones burn for one multiple times? No. Nope, same they thing. They burn for two. Cancel burn two. Oh, okay. Well, this one's free. Answer free the no okay trigger. Healer. Stock healer to 10 5. Yeah. This is like the most unremarkable but okay finisher ever. Yep. Pretty much. You have to try field with this to like get any amount of reach, right? Like yep. you have to play three. Pretty if much. You if you stack them all Carmen, think about it, right? Yeah. Stack them all. How many how often have you played triple Himari and you only get two burns total out of it? You'll never run into that situation with this card if you play triple. Ah. Uh... Yeah, I guess you just they all give it to themselves, right? Or yeah, the, or you just give, you just make one dude seven soul. It's like yeah, if, if, cancel this. if you make one insane, but you have to attack with the other ones first. So like, what if they right. cancel those? Then they were just dead. Then you but side. then well, but then but then I guess you have a swing for seven, right? If it's an empty yeah. lane, so if you have a swing for seven, they either eat the seven or they take two, two, two. Yeah. I like stacking them personally, because um, it, it kind of like lets you see how your damage falls, and then you can kind of pick how you tactically want to fire off your cancel burns. Well, because right? like so, yeah. like, let's say your opponent's at like level three or something, and like you swing with one of them, right? And you want to see if they eat it or not, right? You stack it on another lane, mm -hmm. and you can kind of like see where they're at in terms of damage going into your uh, final Hestia attack. And then, uh, depending on how much you need to kill them, you can, like, go for a side attack, too. Even on their level yeah. threes, you can, like, start side attacking yeah, you them, because it accumulates I like, the soul. I like you that can side, soul. yeah. You can do, like, spicy sides. Soul manipulation does win games. This does do that. Even against level threes, because it can get a lot of soul in multiples. Like, you can, like, if your opponent's at, like, 3-2, you attack with the first one, so your opponent takes it. Now you just side with the second one for two, and you have two cancel burns out of it. It's like, oh, well, I guess you just die now. 
Yeah, just like oh, you're you're in check, you're in check, basically. Like there's yeah. no way out of that situation. Okay, maybe it's a little better than it reads initially. I don't could think, be, it, could... like you said, I don't think it's anything like remarkable, but like it, it is good enough to get you there. It is a totally functional finishing card. And it is very efficient in stock. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so cheap. That that's the appeal of it, I think, is because the set wants to be early playing so much. Um. Right. And the fact of the matter is you you can always double Hestia combo. Like, if you tap out completely to just play early plays turn after turn, as long as you know you just attack three times, because this is a stock healer, you can uh, you have enough to double combo. Yeah, wait, your threshold for triple combo is four stock. Yeah. It's three stock. kind of disgusting. What's four? Four. And three, because she stock heals. You can't play this card with one stock. Yeah, you can't play it with one. She plays for one, but you can't play her with one. So you need four. Stock. You still have to pay two stock for the last one. You pay. F you have four. You pay stock. two. You pay two. Go to one. She yeah. goes clock to stock. You're at two. Yeah. Then yeah. You we're saying triple. Second, you down to one. We're saying and triple. How do you play the third one for one? Oh no no! I was saying for double combo. You can yeah, always no, double I, combo. I literally as long said as you triple. Your threshold for triple is four. Oh and yeah. I, I think you do want to triple it. Yeah. You can. Yeah. Yeah, I think the card's good. Yep. That's fine. I I wouldn't be like upset to play this top end. I wouldn't be super jazzed about it, but it it wouldn't be the worst. There's other things in the set. I guess the event stuff is the cool part. All right, moving on. Back to Andy. Oh, this card's sick. Um, well, um, when this attacks, if you have one or fewer other characters, you can uh, mill a card. If it's a level zero character, you can put it on your backstage. So it's like a summoner effect. Uh, and when it gets reversed in battle, you mill two cards. If you hit at least one level two or higher card, including events, uh, you can send her to stock. This is just a million live card. Yeah, yeah, it's the million this live is card. Good. It's yeah. like uh, the Snotqua from uh, Konosuba, but just better. It's not Bonner. It pluses you sometimes. Bonner Snot. Yeah, card's good. I think it's probably one of the best best cards in the set, especially for considering sure. the set's so hard up for good level zeros. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you don't even like feel bad level like zeros. swinging this late at game unless you're hyper-compressed, mm -hmm. which I don't even know if you get to in this deck. It doesn't seem like you do. Kind of blow your load at two with heals from what I saw over your shoulder last night, Andy. Mm -hmm. uh, like, doesn't seem like you get too hyper compressed unless you like, you know. Obviously, you get your clock compression pretty much every game because of Torch. It's really hard to deny Torch decks their clock compression uh, unless they just eat damage. But like, still a fine card to slam down and just get free stock, get free brainstorms. Yeah, like when your um <clears throat> primary game plan is pretty much just spam early plays. Like being able to get the extra stock on this occasionally is really nice. Mm -hmm. Just some nice incidental stock in the early game, and then you're kind of hard up for good level zeros. So, because you're kind of forced to run so many like level ones and level threes, if you're wanting to like play all the events and early plays. Yeah. So, your level zero spots are kind of tight. Yeah. Limited. Yeah. All right. I I'd, I'd give it an A. That's a good card. Moving on. I can't remember the girl's name. I think her uh, name's Makoto. Makoto. Okay. Uh, wow, more million life cards. No, that was a joke. Um, all of your level <laughs> no zero low characters in front of this gain a thousand power, and then if you're level one or higher, you can sack this and change it into the one zero combo from waiting room. Put it in the slot. This was so it's functional extra copies of your level one, uh, and it can let you recur your level one. I don't think this card that it changes into was very good. No, it's kind of weird actually. The level the well card it changes into is. Ditch one, check four, take two characters. And that's, like, kind of weird, right? When that card already exists in this set. Yeah. Like, there's two of this combo in this set. Well, no, the rest go to stock. What is this? No. You discard a card, look at top oh. four for two cards, send one to stock, one to hand. Oh, wait. Yeah, so it I doesn't think. plus you. It goes even, but it stock charges you. Oh, okay. Okay, sure. Never mind. Yeah, you look at two cards from top, one goes to hand, one to stock. You're right. I'm a, I'm a filthy uh, misreader. Sorry, I play card games. 
Well, I don't think the card this changes into is particularly good. So I don't either. Uh, unfortunately, this is not either. Yeah, e even if you wanted to stock charge, you could. You'd probably be better off with something, some of the green stuff in this set. Yeah, you just play the when you're yeah, out of it. Mm -hmm. All right, for this is an interesting slide. When your other character is placed from stage to waiting room, you may sack this from back row. Wait. Yeah, back row only. It, it Wib said so. And then when... Uh, you can start up, discard the Magic Stone event, and rest this. Choose two characters in waiting room and put them in stock. Huh. Uh, yeah, yeah. when I, when I was, de when I was deck building with this and like looking up some of the cards... Like oh, I, I had to, I had to double check with Wibs because it was worded wrong. Wait, the stone of the first effect is bad. Oh, uh, it's like the deck stock swap, but as a as an event. What do you mean the event's bad? The event is it's like do you know like deck stock swap versus like waiting room stock swap? I mean, it's the same event that Bang Dream has, right? No, it's not. It's deck no, stock it swap. You didn't read the whole thing. I, I just asked it, you if you knew the difference. It's it's deck swap. You have not... three or more characters. Your opponent returns all cards from stock to library. Yeah, this card's stinky. Yeah. Well, this card's not stinky, but the event is. I hate deck stock swap. I've played with them before. They suck. Um, but, I mean, is it okay enough, though? No. I think you only play that event to, like, fuel this card. So I was going to say, this card seems pretty good. It's like a, a nice uh, Encore card for your early plays. Um, and then it, like, lets you actually stock charge yourself with the Magic Stones if they get stuck in your hand. Oh, my my only fear would be it's too hard to accommodate, like, that many events in your deck. I don't think that card's ever going to get stuck in your hand, though, because like, it's so bad that I wouldn't want to play a lot of copies of if it. If I was playing this card as a saver, I would literally never sleeve the Magic Stone just because this yeah. card was in my deck ever. That's it's, wrong, it's the wrong way to look at the card. The cool effect, if it, the event did literally anything but that, maybe it'd be worth stretching for, but deck stock swap is was, garbage. If the event was literally just buns, this would be better. Well, yeah. If anything was they they, li <laughs> they haven't printed literally buns in forever. Yeah, yeah with they have Yeah, because they don't like it. They don't like just like two one stock swap. Yeah, maybe we can yeah, talk one, about one it more when we get swap, to the. the uh, maybe we can yeah, talk yeah. about it more when we get to the event. But just the event seems super weird, like how it has all these conditions on it for kind of a stinky effect. Stock yeah. swaps on the uh, it's always like an oscillation, right? I feel like stock swap is like in the past couple sets, like Zombie Land didn't even get it. There's this, the only weird stock swap. I hope stock swap doesn't become like a rarer effect because uh, I think it's important for modern decks to have. I think the game degenerates when decks don't have stock swap. But does your does whatever. your opinion on the event in this elf card change at all if uh the set has a Fumio, which it does? Yeah, a lot. The Fumio doesn't actually like do anything though, right? Because you're not dropping their opponent's stock to waiting room. You're just sending it back to deck. No no no, he's just saying as a decompression option. Oh, oh like sure. if you combine the Fumio with that stock two one gem. No. No. Yeah. I don't no. think Fumio and that two one have any synergy together. No, I would just play the Fumio as a, as a decompression threat and exactly. move on with my light. Like, wouldn't even think about it. Mm -hmm. All right, next. Uh, I think this is it's back to Andy, right? Yeah, yeah I think so. Um, it's level one Hestia. When you play it, you can discard a card. If you do, choose a level X or lower character with... <laughs> Trait in your waiting room and return to your hand. X equals the number of Bell Argonaut in your waiting room. So I guess it's like a free drop salvage equal to the level of your number of your level two combo. Engrave. It's kind of like the Firebolt event from earlier. 
A if you bit, play yeah. the level two battle, I don't see a problem with playing this card too. I mean, yeah, if you're playing that bell, you probably play this. It's like a payoff yeah. card for playing that. Yeah. Gives you free grave access in a deck where yeah. you're probably playing on Search Brainstorm. How come Zombieland didn't get this card? Currently? Wow, I wish Zombieland got literally any way to access its grave other than playing a raw tornado <laughs> event that isn't bondable or doesn't interact with anything. Yeah, it's really cool. D plus because you only play with that card, but it's a good card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, this girl again. Uh, the event card Ina's present in your hand gets a counter, so you can use it as a backup. Uh, it's a level assist, and you can, when your character's trigger check reveals a Climax card, you can discard a Climax card if you do look at the top two cards of your deck, choose one of them, put them in your hand with the Western Rating Room. But the top two Climax filter for either bar or pants, or book if you're really unlucky. Um, How oh, this event is really neat as a counter. Yeah, it, it, the the event is really funny. I don't think it's good. Mm. But um, using it as a counter does mean it's like a 1-1 one, one memory counter for 1k. And it's it, a sack like, counter, scales. too, actually. Oh, it does the sack, one, one sack yeah. counter. The sack part is pretty good. Um, all it does is sack. The 1k is, like, okay. It's like the most scuffed version of the Gochi counter, anti-change counter ever. It's like Dragon Strike, but worse. Yeah, it, it is like Dragon Strike, but worse. Well, it's a lot worse. Dragon Strike. Dragon Strike is like, what, 3k and two levels it's or something? 2k and two levels. 2k and two levels, yeah. I feel like if you play this, though, like, you're probably either playing this or the, the double rare level 3 assist from earlier. Cause well... I, I, I don't think you play the Inus present with this, but I, I think this just being a level assist with that climax filter on it, just to sit in your back row, that's pretty solid. It is pretty I'd solid. Play the, the double R background. This I, one. I do think top check two filters are like almost not. They're really not good unless you play a lot of events with a lot of ways with without a lot of ways to get them. Uh like, in Symphogear, it was pretty sick to have the one with the bar, so that when I triggered a bar, I could, like, check for any of my 2-1 events. Like, that felt really good. But then I was playing, like, Prilia, and I had the support in it. And, like, after talking with a bunch of people, like Ryan and a couple others, they were like, wait, that card sucks. And what does the filter actually do? And then I cut it, and I was like, wow, you have enough ditch outs, so, like, there's no reason to play it. So as long as Dalmachi has enough ditch outs... I don't think the top two is like worth it over the anti event or backup. Because the anti event or backup is like a really good <laughs> line of text to just give to anything. Especially when you already have the eyes, like Andy said earlier. Like you have the eyes, which is anti backup, and then you can give another lane anti backup and anti event. You're not afraid of anything. Which is pretty cool. So yeah, I don't and, know. And I, I guess as far as like filtering options go, like. You can always just play a torch on your opponent's turn and then draw a discard with the brainstorm. Torch, Ushiwakamaru, to get any climaxes out of your hand. Whatever. Like, I feel like you're not hard up for filter because of the way the Hestia brainstorm works. Like, the Hestia That's brainstorm true. is like infinite filter on both turns. Yeah, but and you I, can probably I don't think you need it. One. And the, the I know it kind of sucks. I'll give it a C minus just because it, it, it still is a climax filter. People, those cards feel good. They're they're just not as broken as Sal Tenth. They never will be ever again. Yeah, Sprig and Kirito ruined it for everyone else. Yeah, no one can have a selective <laughs> salvage ever again. I think they still print that on level twos, but like probably, but yeah, never again. All right, Haru, you get the card. Nice. This is the Aqua early play. No, it's not. Mm -mm. Yes, it is. Mm -mm. No. Nope. It's Ilya. Holy shit, it's not. It is Ilya. Except yeah. it heals to waiting room instead of to stock. And it doesn't have a really shitty card staple to it. Yeah, it has a card that you could play four of and not feel bad about. Nice, I like it. It's a good card. This card's name is Lolly Goddess Hestia. So, get mm -hmm. ready for this oh. to have a completely different name when it comes to English. Is she... A lolly? Yes. This is not the um this is not like the build of like the typical lolly, I don't think. <laughs> she they literally call her in the sh 
the show like busty lolly like idiot or oh. something at some point <laughs> oh like I yeah Hestia is short as fuck dude like she's uh, she's fucking short oh who, who's uh, that zach, zach is here whoa I will... and on the best card too yeah you made it for lolly goddess hestia can you hear me yep we, we got you did it live i didn't connect immediately all right no, you're good we're on slide 93 Oh, the one with an A plus already? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think this me. card is pretty good. I'm not as enthralled with it, but the the early play condition of having the brainstormer in your clock, I will say it's a little bit weird, uh, because you really want the brainstormer on the field to have that filter effect, and the filter effect's even better when you have it in multiples. So you need to make sure you're holding one of these, or like. Torching to get one of these so you can clock it going into life as, too. As someone yeah, think... who's played the Ilya, mm -hmm. like I can tell you that this condition is great when it's good, and there are games where like you get actively punished for like surviving it two multiple turns, where like you you eventually heal this off. It's more common with Fate because you're free fresh looping like a degenerate, but like I feel like in this deck. You are slamming all these healers from what I saw Andy do the other night, and you're milling out a lot with the events. So you're not exactly free freshing, but I could easily see myself like healing off my condition if I clock this down at like two two or two three. Like I could easily see myself sustaining and healing it off. But I guess at that point it's done its job, right? Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I, I will say this much though. Um, I'm usually like a three brainstorm type of person, but um, I, I think if you're running this card, you probably, I, I would start with four Brainstormers and then cut back to three. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Because you, you do always want to have one on the field, and yeah, like Carmen said, it, it's either great or it's impossible. <laughs> I, I feel like decks these days are trending towards like two, three Brainstorm, and there have been very few I've played that ever have wanted four anyway these days um yeah I, I was on three at first and it just felt like it was just too difficult to get so i went back up to four yeah i mean if it's your core game plan where you want to slam this down over and over like a a shitty or shizu like it, that seems fine <laughs> are you uh are you in here already zach you're all set up this with a um, rating opening Oh, yep. Rating, sorry. I was trying to open Hot C. Oh, okay. Yeah, literally, I don't know what part is called on Hot C, but... Uh, no. Estia, Lolly God. I know that the official translation came up, Lori God, uh... Hestia, and that's Lori how, God? Well, you know... Lori God. God. Lord of the trucks. You know, like... <laughs> they can't, uh... Like, Google yeah. Translate can't figure it out. But it's yeah. by context. That's funny. All right. Uh, whose card is this? this is... I think uh, Zach. Yeah, it's a Zach, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is a drop search and a level zero bomb. Pretty good. Nice. Pretty good. All right. At level zero, at least it trades with stuff. Is this worse than a 2500 drop search? That's an no, interesting I don't think question. So. It's, like a it's a side grade. Yeah, I think a 2500 yeah. drop search is like vanilla stats. Uh, I'd rather be able to bottom deck something that would go to memory or... Yeah, like well, a it's a 500 power bomb, right? So it makes it better. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably... Be yeah. I think, it's a, I think it's a good card. It's just not really what this deck wants. I mean, I can see myself running it. I really needed I just, that selection, I guess. Yeah. I this feel like you does, I feel like you need salvage more than search. Well you're Ricky True. is salvage, right? It's the salvage. I suppose so, yeah, if you're running the green one. Yeah. Oh, is there another one? Yeah, they have like the hollow live, like look at top two, add all characters to your hand, but it's really awkward when you're running like A twelve bunch of or events. sixteen events yeah. or something. Alright. 
Eh, I could see myself if I needed some deck access, but you know, I could do a lot worse than that, I guess. All there's right. a there's a spaghetti that salvages from grave. Oh, yeah, it's better. Never mind. <laughs> um. Okay, so back to Andy. All right. Um, we have this dude. Um. Yeah, when you play him, you can uh, return two characters from your waiting room to your deck and shuffle, and then he can side for free without penalty. And uh, on attack, you pump something. One of your other characters 500 times the number oh of your God. other. <laughs> this is like the messiest Shimakai I've ever seen. Oh, because it has so many traits. Yeah. Yeah, it is messy. Um, I don't know. It's The effects it's are synergistic, I guess. It's level zero. It's it's a how how is it synergistic? Well, can it, it can pump a lane over something and then not concede its own lane. That's like the idea with this card. Do I think that makes this card good? No. I think it's bad. I think that would feel pretty bad. Like decompressing your first deck just to get a side attack. Yeah. I'd much... You can use these cards to compress yourself, though. If you have one card left in deck, and you play it down, and then you attack a few times. You can, yeah. Yeah. That's too. That's too high. That, it's too much of a of an edge. Look, case, look, look, look! You got four cards left in deck, right? There's one climax in there. Play your Hestia knife. Mill down to one. You mill the climax out, and you play this down. Put the two clean cards back and attack three times. Broken. That's it so is. Sick. I mean, if you are in a situation where you want to be like drawing and filtering with your Hestia brainstorms and like <clears> using <throat> your event cards and stuff, but you're on a low deck. Mm -hmm. The fact that the fact that you can like shove some dead air back in your deck could be handy. You also play a search brainstorm, so if you really need a card, you could shuffle it back in, and try to brainstorm. Yeah, you do the it. you could do the good old sow, but <laughs> an old sao, dude. Yeah, the good old shuffle back in and then search them with Yuki. All right, next. Uh, I think it's mine. I uh, got another Makoto for each of the other characters. Gets 500 power, so it's 6k all the time. Uh, and then on attack, you can, with this book, you have a full field. You can discard a card and then look at up to two cards from the top. Choose one of them, put it in your hand, put the other one in stock. Don't have to reveal it. You can add anything with this. You can add events, you can add climaxes. Uh, but unfortunately, 6k is not enough for you to have this card stick around. And then and it's uh, a full field condition. And it's a full field condition, yeah. Full field condition kind of ass. The Shion was only good because you had the Ramorous to help you meet the condition. And even then, that sucks sometimes. I really hate full yeah, field condition, I, actually. I, I really hate this card. Doesn't plus. Yeah, it doesn't plus. Don't like. You have other ways to stock charge. Yeah. Hey, at least you can bond to it though. With that other. Yeah, you zero. can. You can like sack summon it. All right. Or. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, level one Hestia. When you play Hestia knife uh, once per turn, this gets four k. Now this card. Can That's a nine k, dude. Four k to nine k. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of cute, but like, how often are you doing? One zero nine k, not good enough. <laughs> well, <it's> like, <laughs> how do you rate this? Like, I don't know. Do you, okay, it's okay, like... playing, okay, so you're playing so many ev like events in this deck that you're playing. Where Hestia do you? Knight. Well, okay, okay. So if you're you playing Hestia Knight, yeah, that. that's what I was gonna say. Like you're playing so much events, right? And then you're playing the bell because the bell gets the event because you're Goblin Slayer. Uh -huh. And then you're going to say, oh, I'm also going to run this Hestia card. Yeah, I don't think you have room for it. No, I don't you think don't. it's bad, but like... It is funny. The deck. It's funny. Maybe if you're playing more of like a... If you're trying to like incorporate standbys or something, maybe it would be like a tanky card to put on field. Oh my god. No, because it relies on another card. We're going to make Standby Goblin Slayer out of... <laughs> no, don't do it. Please. 
Mm -hmm. Un unfortunately, this Hestia is also kind of duplicative with the uh, level 1 bell combo, which gets a shitload of power on attack. Yeah, but this lives on this, defense. Yeah, this you could use on defense. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, you can use it on defense too, but if you're I just mean, trying to swing sucks. over something. Like, I don't think it's very good, but whatever. Alright, next. Uh, Zach? Yeah, I think. Yeah, Zach, yep. go ahead. Uh, two one Hestia. If you have another character with Bell, get seventy five hundred. Timex combo on this pants. Uh, on reverse. If you have another character with Bell, choose up to two characters in win room and put them in the stock in any order. Then look at four. Take take oh. one and put it in hand. It's Kirito. It's power crept Kirito. This is better than Kirito. Well, it's five hundred less power than Kirito, but it's also on a one k one. As opposed to being on a stock soul. I think this card is good. Card is legitimately good. Now the yeah. question is, would you play this over the like early play spam package? Because after seeing Andy play the early play spam package, I would say that seems pretty good compared to this. And you don't have anything to build into with this. It's yeah, not true. like you don't it's, have any like insane top end. Like Sal that. Alice was like, okay, I'm gonna build all this stock and all these resources, and then my cards will live on board, and then I will sacrifice all five of my cards to summon the Winged Dragon of Raw and burn one, <laughs> two, three, like, and then I'll play my finisher afterwards. And they like get all this shit. The, you just play yeah. it with the wealth package. That's it's all the wealth yeah, package. Yeah. Is actually, even, no, actually, I would. I you think could. that's a really good idea. You, you, could. you, have stand, you stand by this out at level 1 with the standby. No, combo. no, stop standbying. No, you can just play this at level 2. <laughs> yeah, why does, there have to, why does there have to be standby involved? No standby. Oh, I, thought you're talking, I thought you were talking about the level 1 wealth combo. No, we're talking about, no, 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 no. We're talking about the level 3 wealth. The one that burns with the 3-3 three, three event. Yeah, yeah, so I was thinking you play both, right? Three. No. That way you can like really take advantage of like all the extra stock generation. No, I'd rather just play something that sculpts towards this. Yeah. Spell. Play door pants with this, and then instead of playing the Hestia top end, you just play wealth and events. Yeah. And then you burn. I really like that idea of standby pants. Andy, what? you have the cards. Yeah, I, you, I have you, the, I you can do whatever you, you want. Me, Parry. You didn't even mean to, but you did. You can make as many bad decisions as you want. <laughs> no one can stop you. This card in a vacuum is great. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Uh, I, like I this card. just don't think this set does anything with it. I don't even think the wealth yeah. is scuffed enough to need that much stock. But Pretty these sad, cards are good. Alright. Next. Uh, yeah, right we Andy. got this 2-1 Hestia. Uh, when you play it from hand to stage, you get to blink one of your opponent's characters, and when you play it from hand to stage, you can pay one, discard one, and your opponent leaves a climax out of their waiting room and shuffles the rest back. There's a Fumio for one. I and also blinks on play. Good. You probably play a copy that your opponent can't look you in the face and dog pound on you. Why am I giving yep. this a seat? Like, well, I don't think it's that great. It's, yeah, yeah, to be honest, I don't I think it's that good. Two souls, rough. This is the decompression tool in the set. And begrudgingly yeah. put a copy into your deck and say, "Oh, well, look, there's this you card. I'll use one in every four games when my opponent makes an oopsie." You like, know how you can afford to play this card, Carmen? You by play playing that, the two on his, yeah, two sure, on. yeah, yeah. Play the two on his, yeah. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, dude, you got it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you got it, dude. All right, Ina. Uh, in this place from the stage, you have two or more other characters. Draw a ditch. And then it's a place from stage to waiting room. So when it dies, you pay one clock yourself. Check top two. Add any characters you find there. Oh, this card's so sick. Uh, it'd be sick in a set where you didn't play events, like Andy said. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Oh, you're right. Even when I was playing Assault Lily with the Shenlin bomb and, like, four cameras, that would constantly come up. And any amount of events makes these cards kind of bad. But, like, card itself is fine. But if, if you do choose to run eventless, this is, like, a... This is, like, really, really good then, right? Like, draw ditch on play. Plus two Ricky on death. 
I think the plus two Rickies are fine if you have a way to work with raw cards and turn those cards into selection. Can Don Machi do that? I don't know. You, pr you probably need the events to do that. Yeah, and then if you're playing this, you're not this, playing yeah. events. Yeah. Oh, the next card. Just play the events anyway in high roll. Whatever. That's what that's what plenty of people will do. They'll slam this in their deck and they go, "Oh, I didn't even think about the events." And then they'll just never reveal events off of it ever. Because why would opponent experience loss? Only I experience <laughs> loss. Next. Maybe card. maybe you just play it as a draw ditch first and maybe if you get the if you get the Ricky if you get lucky you get lucky. All right, next card, Paru. When this card is placed on the stage from your hand, you may look at up to three cards to the top of your deck. Choose one event from among them, put, reveal it to your opponent, put it in your hand, put the rest in the waiting room, and then if you added a card, you discard one. So it is a Rize on play, but only four events. And then uh, on play, you just choose a character, and it gets the ability that it cannot move until the end of your opponent's next turn. Anti runner. This card's really good. Anti runner. Like this card. And it's an event. I guess it's closer to Kome, right? Because you don't have to. It's like an event Kome. Yeah, because you don't have to ditch unless you add. Yeah, that's true. Rize is if, if you reveal, you have to ditch. Yeah. Shout, shout out to AOT. When you hit three <laughs> red, you can't add anything. Um. Yeah, the anti runner thing in English specifically, because like we are reviewing this the scope of the English meta. Kaguya is not banned, and Kaguya will be around forever. So this is a real way to fuck with Kaguya, or AOT if people are it's still good. Ag it's good like the whole game against Kaguya too. Sadly, because that, that anti runner effect, you can hit something in their back row too. Like if they stand by a two two, you can just lock it there next turn. Sadly, yeah. though, it does not automatically kill K on its own. No, it does not. It needs some extra power. Yeah, but is a good card. Big fan. Yep. I think if you're playing Don Machi, you're probably playing this card. 100%. For an any events, you play this. It's, it's on play, like, uh, what is it? Modular mill. Modular deck speed, yeah. Yeah. I like that word. That's a good M word. Yeah. Modular. Modular cards mm -hmm. in this game are broken. The more different ways your card goes, the better your card is. <clears throat> ah, Kermy! Hmm. Next. Kermy Back. only goes two ways now. Well, yeah, Oshil, you can only play two of it. Uh, this one zero five hundred. Are you either Oka? Uh, this two one eighty five hundred vanilla get three k power and the ability that on attack uh, twin drive, and you can rest it, choose a character, give it one k power and Ooh. on reverse bomb deck. That second effect's pretty good. The second effect, if you're in like a memory or like standby hellscape meta, can be good. Just hard remove characters for free. Do you need such an effect when the other line of text is flavor text? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. The 1,000 power is nice. The fact that it bottom decks is nice. Because, yeah. like, if your opponent's in low deck states, like, you can put damage back in their deck. Like, I don't know. That's something that comes up when I'm playing Konosuba with a 2-1 yeah. back row a lot. Uh, it comes up more often than you think when you have this effect. More so than the ones that, like, clock or stock kick. Because, like, you're, you are adding clean damage back. But, I mean, I don't know. You know if you need this kind of card, I think. I think it's one of those. Niche playable plus. Yeah, niche playable niche plus. Niche playable plus. My favorite rating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, right. she's sad. What's she sad about? Andy, tell us what she's sad about. Well, you have to discard two cards. This is the um, it's the Megamine counter. It's the same as uh, Shaken Megamine. But it's bottom deck. It's a it's, it's a level. Oh, it is a bottom decker. Look at that. Oh, it's blue. Yeah, when you so use the backup I, I, of I this. I said that before I read it. It was that right. That means nothing anymore, Carmen. No, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah come on, Cameron. Yeah, there Carmen is the Sakura. Sakura. <laughs> this is a clock bomb. <laughs> Thousand power backup. You can discard two character cards to use the effect again. Kind of. It is actually pretty awkward. It has to be character cards. Since your combo is like always giving you the torch into your hand. That ain't a level zero is how you're going to fund this card. Yeah, this is for your event <laughs> list on Machi. I mean, card's, card's fine. How do you rate yeah. an, an anti-change counter? It's a 
It's better because it's at level one, I guess, on its own. Yeah. All right, vanilla. No one wastes their turn. A guy's determination. We're on to the events. Uh, so this is the Hestia knife. If you don't have a character with Hestia or Belt, you can't play it at all. If you don't have a character with Belt, you can't play it as a counter. But you can always play it from hand without meeting a, co a color requirement. Uh, look it up to four cards off your deck. Add a character. Ditch the rest. This card uh, is too much text. It's a lot of text to just be Torch. Uh, actually, <laughs> so like, how often was there like good Bell back row? No. <laughs> are, are you always gonna have a good a bell in your front row? Generally speaking, I mean, if you're going for the climax combo, you're gonna have the bell, and you have really good access to the bell because you either draw him himself, or you use the Hestia sword to find him, or you use the firebolt event to salvage him. I feel like there's a nightmare so, situation. So, so frame. getting getting double triple combos not the hardest, but it. If you look back at the rest of the set and look at like a lot of the good, um, how how do you say like the glue cards, right? Like 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 not the not the showstopper climax combos or anything, but just like the little things along the way. The green Ricky, the uh, the yellow ice chaser from the trial deck, um, just like a lot of your really premium like. Basically, all your good level zeros. Um, a lot of cards don't have Hestia or Bell in the name, and it, it does come up. Okay. A little bit. But as long as you have the Hestia Brainstormer down, you'll always be least, able to play the card the camera, on yeah. your turn. Um, and as long, once like you get the ball rolling and you have your level 1 combo on field... And he um, is huge, so he's probably... What I, you know, what, what I do like about this is that if you go to 1-0 and you're red and you have these in hand, you can play down your bells and play this card. Yep. Which is really nice, actually. Like, you don't get punished for being dual color at 1. Yeah, that comes up sometimes in Hollow Live, where, like, I want to level up blue, but then I can't play my level 1 combo. Yeah. De depending how it uh, works out too, you can kind of like sculpt yourself into your level one combo too. Like if you're, let's say, you're at like level zero, like zero five or zero six or something, and your opponent like swings and levels you up to level one. Now that you're level one, you can play this event card when your opponent, and you don't need to meet color requirement on it either. So you can play this event card when your opponent attacks you if you have the bell on the, if you have a bell on the field. And then you can start like draw ditching into your combo, but you get like extra draw actually. ditches, like yeah, if you're in that spot. But but that's probably pretty unrealistic because there's n like no good bell cards at level zero, except for the one Riza. the the on death Riza is bell in his name. No, but... no, what you said is still correct. There's no good bell cards at level zero. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I, I like, generally I like the on death reasons, but it's really awkward because they don't hit. A, he doesn't hit on events. It's well, so awkward. Card, yeah. I would give. It's like the only good red. That's why I would give normal. It, it torch, is like the only good red. I would give normal torch a B. I would give like just raw. I would give colorless torch a B plus. I would give a a, a torch that I sometimes couldn't play. Like a B minus or a C plus, so that all evens out and it's a B. Okay, yeah, it's right back where That's it started. Fair. That's fair. <laughs> it's a side grade. Yeah, side grade. I like colorless. That's cute. All right, you get the Ina part. Congrats. Yeah, you get to set. Well, you choose a character. You put it in waiting room. You put this event in memory, and then while this event is in memory, all of your characters are constantly gaining one thousand power. On both turns. On both turns. So if you play four of them, and you yes. neg eight, you yes. can be plus 4k everywhere. Well, if you're playing it as a counter, it's not really an eight. If you're expecting a card to die anyway. Because well, well, this, sure. this with the level assist that goes with it, your level assist is... You could think of it as like always being a thousand power bigger. I guess. 
maybe. I don't. I don't like it. Not a fan. I don't. I think it'd be tough to find the deck spots for, but I think it'd be cool if someone could make something like that work. Maybe. It would be. If I don't it like happened. It though. All right, Zach, go ahead. Uh, the stone. 2-1 event. If you have three more other characters, your opponent returns all cards to the, to the, from the stock to the library, then shuffles it, then puts scene number cards from the top of their deck into stock. Stock swap to deck. Is bad. Because you're not actually messing with their compression. You're, you're like just spinning a wheel. Them. Yeah. You can't do any kind of like calculation right to like find out whether or not this is like more likely to help or hurt it's all li literally you're just re-rolling like, it random you're, yeah. there's there's just no skill in this card outside of the amount of stock there's like no skill idea in this at all it you just yeah these are roll a die yeah the there it, it can only get better for you is the the glass half full way to look at the card um but the glass half empty way to look at the card, which is the correct way to look at everything, uh, is that um, it just does nothing. Yeah. Well, not everything, but in, in, in a when you're like you know playing a card game where you have to like mitigate risk and stuff like that. Yeah. Wanna, no you karma. Do you want to emphasize anything, the downside? Everything. Carmen, Never everything. apologize <laughs> for anything at any time. Thanks, Shadow. Um, I think. I think if you do run the if you do want to run this card, you should at least do yourself the favor and run the uh, uh, back row encore card that goes with it. Mm -hmm. That way you can like stock this card in a pinch for two free stock. But yeah, it's kind of yeah. awkward. The D. All right, promos lightning round. Uh, level Perfect. zero, Lily. Uh, if this is a front row side, it gets a soul. The drop salvage gives something else. One K. Oh, this card's good. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's fucking spaghetti, but she <laughs> is a drop salvage. Ours. Yeah. All right. One one wealth. Uh, can't be reversed. Our boy, dude. Uh, when this attacks, if you have another oh, character, ass. gets fifteen hundred power. <laughs> oh, this card. Wait, this is the worst than the, the Remy from Bang Dream, right? It is worse than the Remy. Isn't this 500 oh, power just, under the Remy? He has a soul trigger. He has a oh, soul. he has a soul trigger. What a fucking garbage card know. this is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sound really disappointing. Kaparu. It's a D. Minus. Probably, yeah. Look, he, has a soul. he has a soul, though. You can It's very close damage. to being worse than a vanilla. Standby target? Yeah, I don't don't like it. This is not a standby eh? target. No. You had that fucking sick bell. It's it's an F plus. This is, sucks. Yeah, this is terrible. Uh one zero bell and this attacks you have two or more other characters gets uh two K six five. And then when it eh. comes reversed, you can reveal top if it's level two or higher, you rest this. Wow, it's Liz. It's Liz. Liz. I don't know. Gara Don Machi. C, C plus. C. Yeah, Gara Don Machi. Yeah, it's a C. The level 2 coin flip. It's a good level 2 coin flip profile, but, like, you know, they, they only see play in very specific decks. Uh, hey, it's, it's a decent card with Bell in its name. Maybe that's good enough. It is a True decent card with Bell in its name. This card's cute. I don't know if there's any way to, like... All right, when you play an event, this card can go to stock. So you mm -hmm. can play the Hesty as a backup. The Hestia knife is a backup and send it to stock on your opponent's turn, which is cool. Uh, and then you can rest it and give something 1k. Do you really need that one card stock charge? Because this is like a hand to stock unless it attacks, in which case it's a stock charge because you expect it to die anyway. But it's also a back row card, which means like. I think this kind of, like that profile, <laughs> that first effect would be better as like just a beater. Something that gains. Probably, a right? On turn. Like a 7k on turn that goes to stock when you play in a... Well, that'd be really good in a yeah. deck where you play events. But still, like what Andy said, I think when you play all these events, you lose slots, and I think you lose the ability to ever play cute cards like this. Yeah. But I do think... Fun in theory. I, I think the idea behind this card 
in a deck that plays a card like Hestia Knife is probably okay. But uh, I don't think it's probably a good. probably like a be a versatile one of. You can always like salvage Maybe. it back, play it down, give a thousand power, then like play an event. I think in a way that it. you, if you are ever winning lanes at any point, it's like a it's like a card you play down after one of your early plays lives in like one of the open lanes, and then as you're sustaining and you play a Hestia knife in your opponent's turn, you uh send it over and it like be fuels one of your heals maybe. I I think. The first and second effect just don't really matter. They don't. They don't at all. No. That's the problem with it. Yeah. It's just a it's just a Goldilocks card to me. You know? I'm surprised. It, you don't play it usually, but when it when it's just right, it's just right. You know. I. You have I, like that one build out there where it's like, oh, this is like. I'm the really perfect. surprised this card isn't actually in the booster, and this is a box topper. I feel like okay. design design like this would be something that would be found in the set, but I guess not. All right, tournament promo. When you want to think about, uh, like, Dom Machi, like, in English, if you want to think about playing a standby, we have no idea if we're going to get this card. We probably will, but this is the other standby in the set. Uh, there are only four in the core booster, and this is the other four that you can play. It's a promo. It also has a gross-ass foot on it. So. <laughs> It is very just a hater. It is very, very detailed. So <laughs> foot has more detail than anything else in this fucking picture, dude. <laughs> but yeah, I mean it's a fucking empty standby. How do you how do you rate an empty standby? But it is important to note that this exists. Well, I mean a lot of eight standby decks play empty standby. Anyway. Well yeah, well, what I'm saying it's like in general in the set, I guess is a good Good discussion to have about this. I don't think it's think very it's good. Viable. No, no, I don't. I think your level two targets are too bad. Your level one's really good, but then your your two and three targets don't seem okay. I, your... I think it, the set tries to push you towards early playing a lot, which directly conflicts with yeah I know standby. Well. Not to mention a lot of your combos having like a full field condition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seems like a little bit too much anti synergy there with what the rest of the set wants to do, but I don't know. Maybe eight standby. There have been like worse, like looking eight standby decks that end up being good. You do have a lot of filter uh, with the event packages, so maybe maybe that's enough to throw it over. I don't know. All right, any closing it thoughts on Don Machi now that we're done on blue? Or just events. A set. Yeah, there's events. There's a there's lot events. of like, really cute stuff in here, but unlike and it's kind of like uh, Day became a god with all the events. But unlike Day became a god, there's nothing like really stand out. There's no there's Hina. No, like, really cool payoff card. Yeah. yeah, the events don't really build to anything. They they're just like they're complementing everything else. Mm -hmm. Which I mean can work, right? That's they, Goblin Slayer, right? Like yeah, other than they do, resurrection, they, they do they do much well. There's just no payoff. But unlike Goblin Slayer, your, your level one combo is not winning board. And True, like, it's not repeatable. True. Well, it is right. The the firebolt is how you repeat it, right? But like right, but how do you get mm -hmm. firebolt to your hand? Uh, you, you 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 refresh Somehow. and you draw it, bro. Eight copies of your level one, just draw it. Oh shit, my bad. Yeah, see, maybe you should think a little bit more before you <laughs> talk again. Fuck you. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry. We went a little bit too far. Um, no, I, I think I think the whole like point of the set <laughs> is to your consistency package is supposed to be in the form of event cards. I feel. Like, instead of just using normal, like, drop searchers and rickies and, you know, this, that, and the other thing to filter yourself, you're doing it with a quirky event twist on it with the uh, Hestia's Dagger combined with the Brainstormer, plus whatever other events you want to run. And then you kind of have, like, that event engine as your consistency tool, and then you just play a lot of early play healers. And you just try to make it out of level zero alive. Yeah, the level zero seems to be pretty scuffed. Now, uh, Carmen, do you know any other decks that have like 
cool one zero and three and suffer because their level zeros are fucking terrible. What? Like Konosuma. Oh yeah, like Konosuma, yeah. I think this set's pretty cool. I don't think it's gonna have like any impact. No, I think it'll be like a quietly totally good fine deck. Like it's a modern yeah. white set. Like mm -hmm. modern white sets are so like we were talking about this the other day, where it's like Zombieland Saga ended up not panning out to be like the most crazy, amazing thing ever. But uh -huh. like, like even the decks that I've thrown together that haven't been good haven't been like really, really bad either. Like they're all like functional decks that you do not feel bad about playing in any capacity. Mm -hmm. But like, it's it's you can't go wrong with these modern white sets, really. If you love Don Machi, like you're not gonna feel bad playing this set. It definitely has strong stuff. Like Andy swept locals with it the other night. Like, I think it feels a lot like slime, just how you have a lot of early play healers and you're compressing a lot. Just in this deck, your compression is in the form of torching through your deck as opposed to stuffing stuff into your memory. If that makes sense. You get to like take advantage of your clock compression easier. Like like I said this earlier, it's really hard to deny torch decks their clock compression, uh, unless you like get really lucky or they get shot up to like high level one when they go for their combo. It's really hard to deny them clock compression if they just want to mill through their deck. They can, um, so because they can always draw the events, play the events, get the events back, play them again on your turn, right? Like really hard to stop them from getting like a five to six card clock going into their next deck, so they get that like little extra bit of compression there. They can ride that out. This, this probably feels like solid against Kagia too, I'd imagine. If, um... Because, like, the Ice early play is going to be beating the uh, Shirogane early play. That seems like it'd be, like, a... If you go yellow. ...worthwhile interaction. Well, you don't even need to splash hard, that hard for yellow. You just run three or four copies of the early play, and you need her in her. Yeah. level as a condition to get the hexproof and power. Your level swapper, or not, your climax swapper, also just happens to have free level swap on top. Of oh that. yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So you don't you don't need much yellow to play the card, but you do need to play like three, four eyes. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's online. All right. Well, I think we can leave it there. Uh, Paro, thank you for being on. Always. Is there anything you want to plug before we get out of here? I want to plug the YouTube channel Insane in the Rain Music because I've been listening to them this whole time. Hell yeah. I don't know anything yeah. about that. But There's like jazz covers of video game music. Some good shit. I'm going to plug Clock Draw Brainstorm TV, the Yo, best new Weiss nice. content creator out there. They make the Wait. best wise content, and I wish that our content was half as good as theirs. Did you say new content creator? Well, they're, they've they been putting out more videos recently. Oh, okay. They've been around for a bit, but they've only I'm recently gonna, started pumping out stuff. I want to sub to these guys real quick. Yeah, you got to watch their video on deck building. Uh, watch the, their interview with the Ileana Waifu tournament champion. Um, some good. There's some good content out there, uh, and I just wanted to shout them out. They're the best. Andy, Zach, anything? That's Look forward to a uh, Don Machi deck tech next week, maybe. Yes, I'll, I'll plug that. And I, I don't <laughs> think... I think we're done. Are we free from set reviews until Ruby, unless they announce something else? E we, we, we've been on some set review fatigue. It's been a lot. They will not let us leave, but... Ruby's going to be fun, though, because I like Ruby. Ruby will be fun because the set looks like pretty decent and uh, you know, like we can actually get into it because it's a English exclusive set. We have no preconceived ideas or anything. Ruby's sick because it's gonna get a lot of views. I want I wanna try to get yes. Dean in on that. As much as Dean yeah. said that he'll never come back on a set review again. Um <laughs> because like he bought a lot of Ruby as well and he's super into it and he's an English exclusive uh apologist, so That'll be, a, that'll be a good one. But we'll see. We'll see what we can do. But with that, I think we're done. Pittsburgh Weisworth signing out. We will see you guys in the next one.